Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, a DT from Weather Risk, your commander of chaos, your chrono of confusion, your captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about this week in weather, and the main emphasis here is going to be on this August 3rd, early in the morning, a tropical depression number four, which will probably become tropical storm Debbie, maybe even become a hurricane, but we'll see about that. Uh, so let's get right into it. I did want to point out here that I am going to be doing uh, the uh, weekly updates now, uh, resuming them. Uh, the heart of the summer uh, grain season is already underway, so that's, and the uh, corn and the soybeans look fabulous. We had a really nice, cool July and a lot of rain in the Midwest, so things are looking great there. So it frees up some of my time, and I can go back to doing the this week in weather <clears throat> as we go into the heart of the hurricane season. So I'll be doing these again probably every uh, Wednesday evening, and uh, so I'm going to try for Wednesday evening again, and uh, we'll see how often we can do this. But things are looking up, so in terms of my workload, you know, it takes an hour and a half, two hours sometimes to do these things, so it's, it's kind of hard. All right, this is the uh, Weather is Grains page if you haven't seen it. I'm thinking about starting a new uh, uh, Twitter X uh, page just for East Coast hurricanes. The problem is I've done this several times and uh, Twitter, for whatever reason, doesn't like me having multiple accounts. So I'm not sure why, but I'm thinking about it. Anyway, and there, of course, is the Facebook page. All right, so let's get right to it. Here is the latest ENSO. And um, as you can see, uh, as the latest values here, we are still not in La Nina, not at all. And we can clearly see why we are not in the El Nino. Oops, let me get rid of that. It's the wrong one. That's what I want to do here. Uh, we can clearly see how we're not in El Nino. So if you look at the top values here, uh, 1.2, which is, let me call up a marker here so you can see. There you go. That's the Wii region right here off of South America. Now, that dropped a little bit over last week, as you can see, uh, four, four tenths of a degree. But the rest of the regions have not dropped at all. So we are still not in La Nina at all, which, is, which we're not. You can see it. Um, here is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. Now, area A, which is this area here, I didn't label these, but this area here, as you can see, that's area A. This is a huge pool of extreme warm waters in the northern Pacific. Uh, look at the uh, tan colors there. That's five degrees centigrade above normal, all from the coast of China, Japan, into the central and north Pacific. Now, this is the area where the La Nina might be developing, but so far it's not. And, of course, here is the incredibly warm North Atlantic Ocean. Now, if we look at the uh, La Nina subsurface readings here, now I want to show you something. This is from July 17th. You see this pool of cold water here? This is about 100 meters down. That's around minus 3 or minus 4. Now, the latest value, July 31, minus 5 or even pool of minus 6 degrees centigrade. That's, that's 9 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a large pool of cold water. And it's really large. And it's around 100 degrees, excuse me, 100 meters beneath the surface. Now, this is the equator. So this is the date line here, okay, over here is Singapore, and over here is the coast of Peru. So you can see it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but it's not coming up to the surface at all. So uh, until that happens, you're not going to get a La Nina. You, you just, you're just not going to get one. So uh, that's what's a problem. And let me show you some of the models here. Now this is the um, CFS. Now the one on the bottom right here, let me call this one up here a little bit and get rid of this. And you can see the one on the bottom right, this is from July 4, all right, a month ago, Independence Day, okay? Now, it was showing that by the time we get to August, we would be at the threshold for La Nina, 0 0.5 degrees centigrade. Everybody see that? Minus 5 right here, that's August. And then by November, minus 1.25, moderate La Nina, maybe even strong, and then uh, borderline, and then it began to weaken in the winter. But the new data... Look at this. It, now, we don't get La Nina until September. This is almost October. So September, we finally get minus zero point. So it's delayed another month. So we're not seeing La Nina in August. Will we see it in September? I don't know. Now, next week, the new climate models come out. Okay? And we get to see what the European and other models are showing. But right now, it remains, it keeps delaying it and delaying it and delaying it. So... And remember, the European model, climate model, since March, has not shown La Nina at all. Not in March, not in April, not in May, not in June, and not in July. 
we'll see what the new one shows in August and so, uh, next Monday or Tuesday when the new one comes out. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if it shows no La Nina. So even if the CFS is correct, La Nina reaches its peak in November, and then in the winter it's weakening. So this is actually kind of encouraging news for people who like winter weather on the East Coast. We'll see. Okay. Let's get on to the uh, global energy budget here. This is a 200 millimar uh, VPAs, uh, Velocity Potential Anomalies, VPAs. So this here is the equator, right? And this is the Atlantic here. There's South America, that's Africa. So uh, <clears throat> the yellow colors represent rising motion. That is to say, a suppression of tropical activity. So look in the Eastern Pacific. You see how we're getting nothing here off the coast of Central America? Nothing. It's all suppression. So this is August 3rd, August 9th, August 13th, August 17th. Tons of sinking air here in the entire Eastern Pacific. Very little tropical activity. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, we, so we have this burst right now, right here. You see this? Rising air in the Gulf and the Caribbean. That's exactly where it is. That's exactly where tropical depression number four is. That's amazing how it lined up. Isn't that amazing? Right there. See that? Right there. Now, as we go through August, it kind of gets kind of near somewhat favorable activity. You can see light greens in here. It's not strongly favorable, but it's not negative either. Okay. Then when we get to August 10th or 11th, look what happens in the eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa. It looks like the Cape Verde season just goes boom and takes off. We'll see if that's the case. Now, so that's, you know, I think the hurricane season is really about to start kicking in here, if this is right. This is pretty impressive, you know, so we'll see. But I, this is impressive um, uh, rising motion right here uh, in the far eastern Atlantic Ocean, starting around August 11th and right through the 17th or 20th. If we look at it geographically, this is taking us to August 17th. Look at the strong rising motion in Western Africa as the tropical waves get very strong and come off the coast. Now, the Atlantic is pretty neutral, all right? And then the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, slightly negative, but we'll see. It looks like it's going to be starting up here soon. Okay, now this is a wide shot, and here is tropical depression number four on this uh, Friday evening, Friday overnight. There it is, uh, probably forming south of Cuba. But look at this big bad bad boy right here in the tropical Atlantic. This is around 45 degrees west longitude, around, uh, I would say, uh, 12 degrees north latitude. And then look at this other one. So this stuff is coming off Africa. It's looking pretty good for early, for early August. Yeah, this looks pretty good here. Okay. And, of course, the dust is much, much weaker here. I did not post a dust picture satellite, uh, but I could have, but I wanted to cut down the slides. Now, this is uh, from... This is early Friday morning, and this is when we had the tropical wave. Now, it looked like it was right over western Cuba, and there was the track for the next seven days, okay? And you can see from the satellite picture, this is from uh, <clears throat> um, early, uh, late Thursday night, early Friday morning. The main system was still no located north of uh, Hispaniola with three different possible outcomes here. But now, uh, from this, and this is the 12Z uh, Friday um, hurricane models. And you can see the system, instead of being here or here, it's now here. See, it's going due west. See this? Due west. Well, the due west takes into Cuba, and now that ends up with a more west track, passing west of Florida, then across the neck, and then right along the southeast coast, from, let's say, off of Savannah, straight up to Hatteras, passing to the south and east of Virginia Beach, then out to sea. That's a very viable track, but this is the new satellite picture here, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, and you can clearly see the center is now south of Cuba. It's gone straight across like this, straight across. Let me change the color of this thing. Here you go. You can, you can see it. There you see, so it started here and moved straight across. This morning it was in western Cuba, excuse me, eastern Cuba, and now it's south of it. See that? N northwest of Jamaica. There's the center right here. And that implies a more bigger center up into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. There is the actual location. Look where it is, south of Cuba. And again, because it's drifting this way, it means when it finally makes its turn, if it does, it's probably going to swing further out into the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the infrared picture, again, early, early Friday night into early Saturday morning. 
pretty, pretty nice looking tropical depression, and it definitely is a tropical depression now. And sure enough, here's a shift. Again, this is the zero Z, August 3rd, Friday night, early Saturday morning, hurricane models, and look at the shift. Shift to the west, shift to the west. Again, here, 12Z, zero Z. 12Z, zero Z, there's the shift. Okay, oh, that makes sense. There's the official hurricane position at 11 p.m. You can see that. And again, you can see it's, it's shifted to the west again. And in terms of development, well, the shear looks pretty good. As you can see, the green colors represent, you know, no shear, as you can see. And there's nothing here in the Gulf as this is coming up. And so all the shear is way to the east. The Caribbean looks great. In the Gulf of Mexico, very little shear. So that looks good. No reason to think that's going to stop it. All right, let's take a look at some of the models and see what's going on here. So this is uh, for Sunday morning. Now, this is the 12Z Friday European. So here's our trough on the East Coast. There's the tropical depression, potentially, uh, approaching the Florida Keys. And there's our heat dome, a big ridge right here. Right? And there's a ridge bringing the cool air, the cold front down from, from Canada, relatively speaking, for August, early August. So this trough is connected to this ridge and this upper low. Now, what's going to happen is this trough is going to go away just as the tropical storm makes moving towards Florida. Let me show you. Okay? So, this was 48 hours. I just want to put that up to get rid of it. And you can see here, this is 78 hours. And you can see what happens here. The system makes it to Florida, and then it breaks down. The trough is gone. You see what happens? That trough is gone. It's all There's a piece of it still left up in Canada, but there's nothing on the East Coast. So, as a result, it's stuck between the Bermuda High and this big heat dome right here, dominating the Rockies and lower plains into Missouri. So that leaves a weakness in the atmosphere. It's called a call, C-O-L, a call, and it, that means it's, the system can get meander or trapped or just linger over the same area. There's nothing to move it. And here on my next slide, this is now valid for a what, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Again, look what happens here on the European. A ridge in Bermuda High, the big gigantic heat ridge on the Rockies and the lower plains, central plains and there's a gap right here but this trough is not deep enough to grab it so the system's lingering here see this if this trough was deeper it'd pull it right off the coast but it doesn't do that it lingers you see the gap and there it is off the georgia coast and now thursday morning it's still off the south carolina coast nothing has changed bermuda high big giant ridge in the rockies and the lower plains there's a weakness here and it lingers it lingers. This trough is going out to sea. See the trough is leaving? Look where it is here on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Now look where it is. It's further to the east. So this trough right now on the European misses the tropical storm. So it lingers. And as a result, it turns inland. As the heat, as this ridge, what happens is this giant upper low begins to push inland and it forces the ridge to the east. And as a result, the ridge expands into Chicago and the Great Lakes. And now, Debbie, or the tropical storm, is trapped over Georgia. There's no place for it to go. So it rains itself out of existence. Now, some of the rain will probably get into Virginia, Kentucky, West Virginia, what have you, Maryland, Delaware. But that's essentially what happens on the European. Very viable scenario, as you can see. At the surface map, okay, let's take a look at the surface maps. This is Sunday morning. Tropical depression, not very well organized, welt out to the west of Florida. Then it crashes into the northern neck by Monday afternoon. Then it moves off the coast of Georgia, intensifies to a you know, potentially a hurricane, potentially by, uh, by the morning of August 8th, off the Georgia Savannah coast, due south of Charleston. You can see that. And then what happens, it gets turned inland because the path to the north gets blocked. And as a result, it moves inland, and you get nice rains from uh, northern Virginia all the way down to Georgia. Okay, that's a viable scenario. Let's take a look at the GFS. GFS, same thing. Initialized, nice trough here. There's your heat dome. There's your giant upper low right here. Okay, now this trough is going to disappear. This is valid Sunday. Now this trough is going to bring rain and thunderstorms to the east coast when it arrives here this weekend. But in any event, okay, so here, so we blow this up a little bit, there is the heat dome, nice ridge in western Canada, and the trough is now gone, and there is the hurricane or tropical storm, Debbie, 
on Monday night, Tuesday morning off the Savannah coast. And again, there's no place for it to go. It gets trapped. You see what happens? Now, the GFS has a much bigger trough here. This is Wednesday, August 7th. This trough comes down and it grabs the uh, uh, tropical storm and it causes it to intensify along the coast, being caught up in the um, uh, difluent flow here. And as a result, the difluents aloft, the interaction between the trough, this trough and the tropical storm right here causes it to rapidly intensify where it becomes a either category one and category two hurricane and passes over Hatteras and then off the southeast coast of New England. Okay, now the key to this scenario on the GFS is this trough. If this trough is not that deep, then the European solution is going to be true, not the GFS. All right, you see the difference? Okay, good. And then you can see here um, by uh, August 9th, the trough is pretty deep. That's a nice trough, bringing in a lot of cool air for August. This is a great pattern if you don't want any heat in the eastern U.S. This is really freaking nice. But the hurricane is on the east coast, and it's went off of Hatteras, just to the southeast of uh, Salisbury and, and Virginia Beach, passing off the Jersey coast to Cape Cod, and then out to sea. Racing, getting caught up in this flow and racing out to sea. And then the trough comes in, and we get some really nice weather, August 9th through the 14th, behind it. Very nice weather indeed. Now, the ensembles, well, pretty good agreement on the ensembles. Here's the European ensemble this, from this Friday. Now, this is valid Sunday night, Monday morning, August 4 or 5. There, look at all the clusters. You see the cluster of activity right here? Okay, that's where we know it's going to be. Very high confident forecast. Now, then we go to Tuesday night. It's crossed Florida to the Georgia Carolina coast. You see that? Again, a very strong cluster of activity right here. So far, so good. Now, by the time we get to Thursday, August, I guess this would be August uh, 8th, there's a more of a spread here. You can see, see the red numbers? Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see it a little more clearly. And then I'll uh, bring that front. There you go. So look at the spread here. See the spread of the numbers? It's some of the positions up close to Hatteras, Wellington, Charleston, Savannah, bit of a spread. General cluster, Georgia, South Carolina. And then finally, on the European Ensemble, this is valid for August 9th. And look at the spread here. It could be anywhere along this whole... Now, it seems to be a cluster by the North Carolina coast. but it, Like I said, there's quite a bit of a spread here. And that makes sense as you go further in time, there's more possible variations. The GFS model, same thing. Look at the cluster off the Florida coast. Very good agreement here. This is Sunday night. And then there it is moving through the Florida neck on the Georgia, South Carolina coast. Very similar to European. Excellent, excellent model agreement. But, and this is my last slide, there you go. This is now Wednesday night, uh, August 7th into August 8th. And we have a cluster somewhere along the southeast coast. Savannah, Charleston, Ball Beach, Wilmington, Hatteras, something like this. But as you can see, it's quite a bit of a spread here. So, Again, the key solution, if you like the GFS, where, you know, it brings it up the coast and it, um, you know, it really shows it uh, uh, taking off. Um, and I'm sure you've seen the 18Z GFS. It's a very powerful storm. It makes it into a nice hurricane. The problem is that we don't know if that's going to happen. This trough has got to be strong and it has to drop southward. This has to be a big strong. And maybe we'll see the GFS solution. Now, if the GFS is overdoing this trough, then we end up with the European solution, in which case the system gets pulled inland and it rains itself out over the southeast coast. But like I said, again, at the beginning of the presentation, there is a lot of tropical activity developing here, so things are going to get really busy over the next 30 days. This is meteorologist at DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the uh, Weather Risk uh, uh, Twitter page and then over on the website and the Facebook page.